Hello, today we're working on the accounting topic, Accounting for Bad Debts. We're in a series for Intermediate Accounting, Chapter 7, Cash and Receivables. So this topic is Accounts Receivable. Now this is also a financial accounting topic. You can learn something if you're in financial accounting. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where we help you finally learn financial literacy. Now, Accounts Receivable is a trade accounts receivable. Remember, you receive accounts receivable when you sell a product or service. Maybe they pay it later. Hopefully they do. If not, then that's bad debts. Up to this point in accounting, you've assumed that everyone is going to pay on time. At this point, we realize not everybody will pay and not everybody will pay on time. So this, that is the problem of bad debts. Now, there's two ways to handle bad debts. There is the allowance method, which is the FASB method. This is the only approved method for financial statements. The allowance method estimates now what future bad debts might be. So it estimates in the year of sale. So at the end of the year, you have to estimate what your bad debts are going to be in the future because you want to match the revenues and the expenses of this year. It's not an expense of a future year. It's an expense of this year because you made the sale in this year. The other method is required by the IRS, and that's the direct write-off method. The direct write-off method is not really a method. It's just you can't estimate. You just write off when you find out they can't pay. Now, on the allowance method, we have two ways to calculate the bad debt expense. The first way is a percent of sales. This is easy. This is the income statement approach. And when you calculate that number, this number times this percent, then you get the bad debt expense number. Okay, we'll show this in future problems here. The percent of accounts receivable is the preferred method. It's the balance sheet approach. Now, the calculation doesn't give you the expense amount. It gives you the allowance balance, which you can use to back in to find the expense amount. I've got five problems to show you today, and so... We'll show how this works. Now, one more thing on, on notes is net accounts receivable is the idea of accounts receivable less the allowance for doubtful accounts gives you net accounts receivable. Now, just a word here, doubtful accounts, bad debts, and uncollectible accounts all mean the same thing. So the, these words are used interchangeably. Let's start with example one. So we have account balances for December 31st. For the year, we have sales of 560,000, accounts receivable is 82,000, and allowance for doubtful accounts is $800 credit balance. I think it's helpful if you do the journal entries here. So the accounts receivable is a debit balance of 82,000. The allowance for doubtful accounts, we start it with 800. So it says, estimate bad debts to be 1% of sales. Make the journal entry. Well, remember, 1% of sales is going to be just the bad debt expense number. So we can actually do the calculation here. We'll say 560,000 times 0.01, 1%. So the answer is 5,600. The bad debt expense estimate under 1% of sales is 5,600. So what we're going to do, we'll put the 5,600 here and the balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts is going to be 6,400. So what is our net accounts receivable? Well, our accounts receivable is 82,000. That's given. Our allowance for doubtful accounts is 6,400 and we just simply subtract 82,000 minus 6,400 75,600. This is the goal of bad debts, uh, accounting for bad debts, is to say, yes, we are legally obligated $82,000 from our customers, but we expect to collect 75,600. Now, same problem. Let's just change it to what if we're estimating bad debts to be 5% of accounts receivable? Well, we've got the same 82,000 as our accounts receivable, our same 800 
as our allowance for doubtful accounts. But it says we estimate bad debts to be 5% of accounts receivable. So 82,000 times 5% is going to give us the balance here. Now watch, 1% of sales is this number. 5% of accounts receivable is this number. So we're going to take 82,000, which is our accounts receivable, times 0.05, 5%. So the balance... We're estimating the balance to be 4,100, and we need to back in to figure out what our journal entry is. 4,100 minus the 800 is going to be 3,300. So our bad debt expense is 3,300, and our allowance credit is 3,300. We had to back in to find that number. So what is our net accounts receivable if we made this estimate rather than the first estimate? Well, it's still $82,000. Our doubtful accounts are 30, sorry, the balance is 4,100. And the net accounts receivable, we subtract it out, and it's going to be 77,900. Now, a single company would not do both. You would do either percent of sales or percent of accounts receivable. So this is how the, the first entry works for percent of sales and percent of receivables. So we have four more to go. Now let's say the account balances on December 31st. We have sales, we have accounts receivable, and we have allowance for doubtful accounts, and the balance is a debit balance. Now this is different. This is a little unusual, so that's why we did it this way. Accounts receivable has a $144,000 balance. The allowance is $1,100 debit balance. Now why would we have a debit balance? When we estimate, we credit allowance for doubtful accounts. When we write off an account, we'll see it later. When we write off an account, we're going to debit the allowance account. So what has happened is we wrote off $1,100 more than we estimated. So we just have to make sure we estimate more. So we have 1% of sales. 1% of sales, so $840,000 times 0.01 and that's 8400 the balance for the allowance um, for doubtful accounts would be calculated based on what our entry is so we need to do the 8400 we put the 8400 here and then we figure out the balance it's going to be 8400 minus the 1100 and that 7300 is the allowance for doubtful accounts. The journal entry is just still 1% of sales. We need to figure out our accounts receivable, net accounts receivable, so 144,000 is our accounts receivable amount. Our balance is 7300, so our net accounts receivable here in this case is 136,700. All right, what if we make it percent of accounts receivable? Well, we still have 144000 as our accounts receivable balance. Our allowance is 1100 debit. And we're going to take 5% of accounts receivable. So that number is accounts receivable is 144000 times 0.05. Now, this balance is 7,200. Now, what entry does it take to arrive at 7,200? Well, we need to take the 7,200 plus the 1,100 because we'll have 1,100 minus, 8,300 minus the 1,100 gives us 7,200. So we're going to make an entry for bad debt expense of 8,300. So when we have bad debts to be 5% of accounts receivable, we're going to make an entry in the amount of 8300 and that is our entry. Now, what is our net accounts receivable? 144000 less the 7200 Our net accounts receivable is 136800 Now, let's look at the third problem. The third problem is pretty simple. It says, 
the unadjusted trial balance, December 31st, before any adjusted entries. We have allowance for doubtful accounts, $4,000 debit. We have net sales of $1.2 million. We have accounts receivable of $220,000. It says, determine bad debt expense for 2020 if it's based on 1.5% of net sales. Now, do we need T accounts? Do we need to figure out what is the balance of allowance for doubtful accounts? We do not. All we do, this is so simple, if it's percent of net sales, all we do is take 1.2 million times 0.015, which is the 1.5%. And so our entry is bad debt expense, allowance for doubtful accounts, 18,000. That's we're, we're finished. We could calculate net accounts receivable. The problem does not ask for it. Certainly, we can figure out what that amount would be. All right, problem four. The aging of accounts receivable is a sophisticated way of doing percent of accounts receivable. So we age every account. We put it in categories, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And we figure out the longer that the account is not been paid, then the higher the percentage. So if six months has passed, there's a high percentage that the account will not be collected. So let's see what we have. The amounts estimated to be uncollected, 180,000. That is going to be, the, we want that to be the balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts. Our accounts receivable has a balance of 1,750,000. And the allowance for doubtful accounts beginning balance is 125000 So, what's our journal entry? Well, we just do the math here and say, well, 180000 minus the one twenty-five. It must be 55000 So, our bad debt expense is 55000 And our allowance for bad debts or allowance for doubtful accounts is 55000 the accounts receivable balance is $1,750,000 and our allowance for doubtful accounts we know is the $180,000, the balance. So we expect to collect $1,570,000. All right, last problem, number five. All right, let's look at this problem for the allowance method versus the direct write-off method. It's the balances are December 31st. We have sales of 380,000. The account receivable balance is 47,000 and the allowance for doubtful accounts is $1,000 credit. Now, the allowance method, we have two entries. One is the expense, the estimate in the year we make the sale and then we write off the account. So we make the expense one year and the write off in the following year. On the direct write off method, there's no entry so we have to make the expense and the write-off much later, months and months later. All right, so let's do this problem. Let's assume 1% of sales is our bad debts. So we're going to take our sales of 380000 times 1%. And so we have 3800 is our bad debt expense. And then 3800 is our allowance for doubtful accounts. There's no entry on the direct write-off method, but we're making an expense entry under the allowance method. This is the financial accounting method, and this is the tax method. Different purposes, that's why we have different rules. When we actually write off an account, we've already accounted for this, so we're gonna debit the allowance for doubtful accounts and credit the account receivable. We're writing off that account receivable. We no longer expect to collect it. The bad debt expense, is the entry for the direct write-off method and the accounts receivable is 750. Now, let's do one more thing and we'll be finished. Let's do the accounts receivable before and after. What happens to the net accounts receivable? Well, our net accounts receivable starts at 47,000 with his accounts receivable and the allowance is 1,000. So our net accounts receivable is 46,000. What, uh, what if we write off an account for $750? If we write off an account for $750, this is the $47,000 minus $750. That's $46,250. And we write off some allowance minus 
before and after our net accounts receivable stays the same. We've already taken into consideration that an account may not be collected. And this is how we, we do this and this is why we do it. Bad debt expense is a valuation issue that uh, tries to value properly how much we really expect to collect of our receivables. All right, thanks for watching.